Let's go. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Tyler. And this is Merle at Palin Music. We are at our Kansas City North location here in Liberty, Missouri. Uh, after hours, if you will, and uh, we've all gathered this evening to- uh, For a big deal. For a big deal. It's not often that an honor like this is bestowed upon us, and that honor is the fact that LSL, which is a brand we are so proud to represent uh, on so many levels, had contacted us a while ago and said, hey, we're getting into the pedal game. And not only that, but we would like to send you the prototypes, not the finished product, mind you. Like, you'll see some pictures as you watch this of the backs of these pedals and stuff. We're talking handwritten stuff on them, label makers. These are prototypes. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna check them out this evening. We've got four different models. We've got a modified 808. We've got a Klon style pedal called the Lucid Overdrive. We've got a Clean Boost, and then we've got one that uh, I'm kind of comparing to like a really great Roger Mayer, like Voodoo One, or like an SD9, think like Michael Landau, Scott Henderson, like um, that pedal I'm really excited about. There's some EQs in it that you're gonna hear in a bit that are really cool. House cleaning, first off, I'm playing the, um, the T-Bone, brand new. We just got this out of the case, it's awesome. Merle, what do you got there? Lucky enough to play a Satakoi that is named Casey. I've got a Wahoo. Amplifier wise, I'm playing through one of my favorite amps. It's the Bad Cat Black Cat. And uh, here is just, Merle, would you turn that off for me super quick? This is just kind of my tone I've got going. It's got a little bit of grit on it. That's kind of how I have it run. Oh, a little more overdrive for. So that's kind of what I have going on. So this setup is going to kind of feature the Klon style overdrive, we're gonna do the clean boost. It's gonna help you kind of understand how those circuits can be utilized with kind of a dirty, a dirty sound. Merle, what are you gonna be talking about? I'm gonna be talking about the 808. Yep. Which I own the vintage 808, yep. TS 808. So uh, it's exciting to hear. This one's got a switch on it we'll talk about a little bit later. It does yeah. three different things though. And then you're gonna be doing kind of the more distortion style as well. What amp are you playing through? I'm playing through a Milkman Creamer. I mean, it's clean, it's sweet. Kind of like a, uh, like a really beautiful Princeton with a 12 inch speaker, yeah? Princeton on steroids, right? Awesome. Yeah. All right, yeah. enough yammering on. We're gonna jump into this. So we're gonna start with the Klon. Um, for many years, I actually had an old Klon uh, and used it on a lot of recordings and some touring with different people. Uh, and when that type of thing is necessary, it's really beautiful. Uh, I remember we were at the tracking room one time in Nashville and there's this artist, Ingrid Andres, and we did this song live on the floor where like, like we weren't doing overdubs. It was like a live song called uh, Both. And uh, I had a guitar plugged into an old deluxe reverb Ooh. and I just needed more because there wasn't a guitar player and we'll demonstrate what happens when you turn that on and the space it takes up in a mix. And I just remember that being one of those things where I'm like, that's why these pedals are so cool. So just that one amp and that one pedal? That one that amp, one pedal, and I think I had an Echoplex plugged in just for some delay. But I mean, that I turned that pedal on and it, we just didn't turn it off. It was like a great EQ. Speaking of great EQ and a dirty amp, let's get into what's so cool about this. Let's start with the, uh, Let's just show them the tone knob suite because okay. I think that's something pretty cool in here. So I'm just gonna kinda, and you're gonna be able to hear what's going on. Merle, take it, take it away. That 
that's squawking. That yeah. is a squawk. So that's wide open, yeah. right? So yeah. interesting. Okay. And I don't know if it's going to be like this in the final, but how it is now, am I seeing that correctly? When you turn it all the way to the left, yeah. it's wide open. Yeah, it's, it's bright and squawking. Instead of turning it to the right. Right, so that's the opposite okay. where my mind goes. So. Let's go the other way. All right, here we go. So that kind of gets nice and dark. Yeah. That's like a massage, it just mellows. Let's find somewhere kind of in the middle. Tell you what, for curiosity, let's fuss with that for a minute. Why don't we turn the gain down and the volume up? And keep in mind too, like this amp does have a little bit of drive. So right now, this is what I like to use a Klon style pedal for. We're using it as a glorified EQ with a boost in it, and it's powerful. And it really it'll transform everything about your bass tone, if you will. Turn it off for just a second. Now pop that back on. All right, now let's do the opposite. Let's turn the volume down to about unity again. Yeah. Oh. Pick up because I'm gonna go to the uh, the smoother side. Ah. It's, it's almost like you're moving a mic around when you're recording. It's Say like that again. It's like you just moved a mic when you're recording. You move the mic and it changes. Yeah. So I got like a filter. It's like a, like a master filter. Yeah. Well, let's just, check this out. Let's leave it there for a second. Let's hear how this gain cleans up. Let's put it. I probably usually wouldn't use it in such drastic measures. Let's put the gain at noon. Yeah. And the volume at noon. And I'm just gonna turn down the volume. Tone, noon. Tones all the way up. Man. All right, let's put that tone. Let's, uh, you were talking about the pedal tone. I was thinking my guitar tone. Oh, uh, I'm a goofball. Mm. All right. All right, I'm gonna kick on the gain of the amp. I'm a huge fan of David Grissom, and he has this thought process of like different gain stages along the way to where like, if you turn that off for a minute, it's like uh, channel one, channel two, and then channel three, which, you know. Super, gets super dynamic and. Yeah. Very cheap imitation of David Grissom. But nonetheless, this pedal, it's gonna help, it's gonna help sculpt a sound. I view it like this. If you have a tone with your amp and guitar that already has a lot of character and some juice to it, this is a really great way to really sculpt it. And so, yeah, yeah I'm it's, a big it's, fan. It's I'm a, a really big fan. It's a tool like that, yeah. We've got the Claro, handwritten right there, yeah? Claro Boost. Yep. Uh, you know, on the surface, it's got a boost knob, but um, we noticed a little bit earlier, there's something more going on in there than just a boost. So I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna say anymore. I'm gonna play some chords and he's just gonna turn that on and off. Yeah. Maybe in the comments section below, you guys can like talk about like what you hear happening. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what we hear. So here, just. All right, take us there. Play? Yeah. Man. 
I feel like this would be really evident on the on the uh, the neck pick of. Yeah. I mean, even just that's at unity, right? You keep going. When I just turned that up, did you feel like it was sagging or compressing or anything? Yeah, there's something happening in there. I'm, whatever filters and diodes and magic and voodoo that goes into a pedal uh, is happening. There's a couple pedals uh, that I love in the boost range because they do things like this. One is an old boost pedal uh, by uh, Fred Tacone at Divided by 13 that he used to put in his amp switcher box, the switch hazel that he sold. And it added top end when you turned it on. So it wasn't just like a boost. You were actually kind of like kicking into the band a little bit. And it was incredible. Um, yeah. And the other one is the Analog Man Bad Bob Boost. Uh, has something similar. But this does both. And you, you said it, there's like, the, like some sort of saturation and compression along with the top end that's happening. That's like, it's really dynamic though because Top is more obvious. Even with like dense chord. It's like, it's yeah. huge without getting muddy, right? Yeah, I'm gonna nail the boost all the way up. Yep. That's almost that's almost too much, dare I say? Well, for that bad cat to handle. Mm. Not, but almost, almost. All right, let's nice. do this again. Let's let's knock it down just a little bit. I'm gonna put it on the overdrive setting of the amp, okay? Which I would usually use kind of for like a like a uh, you know like a lead. Go ahead and turn it off for a minute. Now pop it on after hearing that. Maybe turn it up to three fourths of the way. I, I mean, I don't. With humbuckers. Here, try. Oh, try Casey. Because I got to hear it with single coil. Yeah. Sorry, we're not too technical around here. We just like tones. Oh, let me kick that off. I mean, what? I mean, I, I just want to make sure when the humbucker is making it sound so good. But no, man. No. It, you know, and I will do this. I'm going to cut down the top end of my amp. I would do this in a real world scenario, so I'm not trying to like pull one over on you guys. But turn that off for just one second. I'm just gonna turn the cut down. Just. All right, turn that back on. I mean, I just took my compressor off my board. There's something yeah. that happens in there, even at Unity, by just turning it on, it, it, you gotta play it to experience some of that. And I know you can't do that watching this, but uh, true. maybe you can hear the amp conforming a little differently to the note. So I have, I have nothing more to say on the matter. It's great. Next. <laughs> We're back. Speaking of the thing I'm pointing with, I just want to give a quick <laughs> plug. The Series 1 LSL. Go to palinmusic.com to check them out. Satin finishes, oh. slightly lower price point, unbelievable weight and sound. 
I can't wait to plug this in afterwards. Look at the back of that neck, isn't that gorgeous? But it's not why we're here, is it? Nope. Why we're here is to talk about yet another 808 style overdrive on the market. There's a few things that set this uh, different and I'm not, I'm not trying to oversell it because we're just talking about, we're, we're trying it out for the first time, but you got some sounds out of this earlier that yep. made me not know what pedal you were playing through for a minute. And when that happens, that goes, that's worth a spot on my pedal board because it's versatile. So. See, I've got a vintage 808. Oh, that's right. But it doesn't have that switch, which is like three pedals in one. I mean, I know people say that for marketing, but that switch. So. Different. What we're talking about right now, you can see it right here, right there. We're in standard right now. It's a three-way toggle up and down. If you go to the bottom, as I do right there, you're gonna get somewhat of a bass push, and I'm saying it in layman's terms because that's how I would wanna hear it. So I don't know the specs. Once this comes out, I'm sure they're gonna tweak it a little more. Yeah, it's a prototype. You know, once, well, it's a prototype. Yeah. When we go up to the top, we're gonna add even more bottom end into it. And when you're playing with a single coil guitar, you know, depending on the amp and band makeup scenario, if it's just you and a bass player, you probably take up some room. You know, you don't wanna take up as much room, but you want some more bottom end, you go down there. So enough of me tweaking here. Let's play. So, a reminder, we've got the Sadakoi, we've got the Milkman Creamer, and here's the clean sound. All right. I'm gonna set everything at noon, and we're in the standard no bass push position. Here we go. It does everything yeah. you want to do. I'm hearing, what I'm hearing is where a normal 808 would sit a little more in an upper mid push. I'm perceiving what I'm hearing is like a lower mid push already, which is kind of attractive to me. I, I dig that. It, it gave more definition. Yeah. In that lower mid push. All right. We're gonna let all things be the same except the tone knob all the way to the left. Everybody stop. What? This thing just came into its own league. And I'm gonna tell you why. Like, that's usually on an 808, that's usually kind of a treble knob. And there's like a little too much and not enough. And let's get all the mods of all the 808s we've ever had. And eh, what's your flavor of your favorite mod? That is one of the most powerful tone shaping tools. And I'm, 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 I sound like I'm selling you a car right now. It was drastic. That is, that's incredible. Well, I'm gonna do that again. Yes, yeah, And I'm gonna go in. slower. It would be cool as I'm doing this if you rewind the videos you're watching it because it's so musical you're not going to realize how far you've gone until you turn backwards. So check this out. Still musical. That's totally musical. That's amazing. Yeah. All the way up. You know what yeah. I just, you know what I hear there? Let's say, and we'll do this, we'll cut to this. Let's say you're using the distortion we're gonna check out here in a minute, and then you put that 808 after it, there's your lead boost. Because the most important thing I've learned uh, about lead boost is not volume increase. It's where you're putting your mid range in a band. You can go to this knob and turn up your mid range without touching a single volume knob, and you will blast through the doors. Cut. You cut. Yeah. I mean that's that's incredible. Okay, we could stay on that for an entire segment. Uh, do you you want me to keep everything the same and go through the bass switches? Yeah. Kind of yeah, hear yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. All right. So standard. <laughs> So it's like, I just turned down the tone with the bass and it kind of is like, it's almost like a steel string singer type of like, 
like just reallocating where your frequencies are. Now, go back up. Now we're gonna put it in the top, which? That's my favorite. It's your favorite. It's Merle's favorite, everybody. <laughs> Let's go to your bridge position and go through this gain a little bit. Yeah? Yeah, and I'm gonna put it back into standard so we can just, I just want to make sure we're having a good baseline of like where the pedal is stock as we go through this as well. Go ahead and keep rocking. I mean, yep. so at this point, at this point we've checked out three pedals. We've done it through, you know, multiple amps and guitars. And the word that's coming to me, the versatility. Like these are like, they have names on them so that we understand like this is ketchup. This is mustard, but there's so much more happening underneath the hood here. I think like if there's anything I want to iterate for you all to check out and not just gloss over as another pedal, uh, there's a lot more in here that's happening than just the names or the perceived idea of it. So let's move on to the distortion. Oh, hey, should I get a guitar with humbuckers? Ah, uh, what are you thinking? Yeah. You thinking maybe I we think try it through some gain? And maybe this amp. Ah, we'll see you guys in a second. One thing we wanted to make sure we tried, and we tried it right before it turned it on, and we're glad we're showing this to you, is the fact that like, far and away on the other side of the Stevie Ray Vaughan, you know, style of playing that you would do with the Tube Screamer, which is incredible, uh, is the fact that you can use it for a real tone sculpting tool in, in front of a gainy amp, mm -hmm. cut a little bit of bottom in, add a lot of focus, you know, if things get, you know, can get a little hairy. Uh, and so, picked up the uh, the T-bone. Yeah. And so, why don't we just show? We went back to the black cat, just for clarity, so everyone knows we're and back humbuckers. there. And humbuckers. And this is uh, the bass tone. <laughs> like a unison bin. Let's hear how much um, hang time we can g gain. <laughs> What's it sound like on the neck pickup? <laughs> That sounds great. And I will also note the Black Cat has a really great master volume. So in the room, and this is super useful for you gigging guys, it's like, well, that's great, but you also just gained up 20 decibels. I can't do that. There's not, there's not a real perceived volume increase because of the master volume. It's completely, again, I can't iterate enough, it's replacing where your mid-range is sitting and it's super useful. So next pedal. <laughs> Uh, this is the one I think we're all kind of excited about. I love the old style um, Roger Mayer Voodoo One and the uh, the Maxon and uh, uh, the the SD9 pedal that uh, you know Landau, Scott Henderson, among other people, which might be why it's called the Vital Distortion. Yeah, just saying. Um, enough enough jabbering about it. We're gonna get in. Obviously, you can see. Treble, middle, bass, volume, gain. Interesting thing about the gain is where it is in the circuit. Some gains you can turn down all the way and it's like, oh, it's a clean boost. This circuit acts kind of like those old overdrives. When you take the gain out, it's out. And you're gonna hear as we go through, you're gonna go from like starved amplifier to saturation. So, clean tone, we got the Oahu, the T-Bone, Milkman. Clean. To nothing. All right, here we go. I'm 
I'm gonna kind of tweak some EQs uh, as we go, yeah, kind of yeah. like where my ear's taking me. So you're gonna see everything that's changing. I'm just gonna kind of sculpt to what you're playing. You're okay. gonna kind of see how versatile these things can be. So I'm liking as you increase. Yeah, everything is at noon right now. So I'm gonna fuss with the EQs a little bit. <laughs> Interesting to note, uh, the tone knob on the 808, you heard us kind of yammering on in uh, glee about that. I'm hearing the same EQ curve mm -hmm. in this, and I think that's a really interesting thing. It's not, it's a true like mid-range to low mid that's sculpting. So, so that's like a signature between all pedals. It seems like we're kind of getting that through through that. I wouldn't say so much with the Klon because it's its own like really wide filter, but definitely between the 808 and the Vital, uh, the OG, OD, as it's the prototype's called, and the Vital Distortion, they're taking the mid-range into a totally different place, which to me is like insanely usable. So let's keep rocking. <laughs> I mean, Man. that's clear. How Shut that off for a second, please. That's what this sound. Gosh. And let's keep the knobs where they are. Let's hear it on the neck pickup. Let's hear how clear this thing stays at high gain. Turned the bass literally all the way down. I turned that mid-range up and kind of left the treble at, you know, 230. Different amp. And it's amazing. Yeah. Dustin Babitsky, who you know from uh, What's That Button Do, oh. is running our audio. And I just saw his face when we did that. I'm assuming that means it sounds good or that means it sounds really bad. Eric Johnson vibes. Uh, Eric Johnson oh. vibes. Um, man. Uh, when everybody in the room kind of starts getting excited, you know, that's just hearing it, that's awesome. All right, this thing th plays well with gain and humbuckers. I would like to, if you're open to it, I want to see if it'll go into that Michael Landau territory where the gain's kind of low and the mid's kind of scooped and hear what it sounds like with the Satikoi. So give us one second, we're going to be right back and we're going to get into that territory with the exact same pedal, totally different sound. All right, we're back to go to another side of the Vital Distortion to see if it can do the thing um, that I know some guys love these pedals for and that they buy them for. Is like, we just saw the high gain, Eric Johnson, you know, it really holds together when you're playing a lot of notes and dense chords, it does a thing. We're talking low gain, kind of mid scoopy, like super dynamic Strat-esque thing. Um, so, Satikoi, back in the creamer. Yes. has that compression and that sag. It's almost like like a good old fuzz face when you roll. 
the knob down, it starts to get this weird saturation as though like your nine volts about to die. 70s. Dude, that has yeah. that thing, man. What's it, does it, what, does it get too bitey on the bridge? Sounds like it feels like two completely different things when you dig in and then when you kind of rake your strings. I know which pedal's my favorite. We should probably. I do too. Go to our corners and see what we got. Yeah, yeah. that sounded awesome. That like that really did it. So, uh, we're, you know, I know we're gonna do some final closing thoughts, but man, I love this clon. This really struck me. I'd like to play this again through my black cat. Uh, and do you, do you want to play that vital? Let's play oh, together. You play, yes. You want to you want to jam a little bit? I'll play vital. You play lucid. And we'll uh, yeah. You can kind of hear these in conjunction together. You know, we're gonna dial some stuff in pretty quickly. So these prototypes, LSLs. I wonder if these are the names they're gonna stick with. I don't know. Cause I like them. I really do too. Uh, I really do too. I've got some thoughts on this, on on some of this stuff, and I'm sure you do too. After we jam, we'll talk a little bit about it. All right, we're gonna jam. Woo! Distortus. Nice. We got that wrong. But what's right is how great it sounds. Uh, all kidding aside and, and, and goofiness aside, um, this is to Lance and Lisa. Like, thank you. Like, you could have gone a lot of places to do this. And uh, it's not taken lightly that you allowed us the chance to try out the Vital and the Claro and the OG and the Lucid. Yeah. Um, and as fans, not, not people that work in a music store, but as fans of pedals and guitars and stuff, it's a really neat experience to come into something like this and get to like be a kid again and explore and, you know, and, and have fun like this. And God, God. To, Tyler, can yeah, I say? Please. From the early 70s when I started, I've had a lot of pedals and I found my favorite pedal. Yeah, Ever. and I've got an original 808, right? Yeah, but this vital. Yeah, yeah. the Lucid yeah. reminds me of the Klon I used to have, and and it, it's you know it's an incredible tool. So, for more information on these beautiful LSL guitars and the four pedals you see in front of you, make sure to go to PalinMusic.com for any in-store needs you have. If you find yourself in the Kansas City area, please come see Merle, myself, and the gang at the yeah. Kansas City North location in Liberty, Missouri. It's been our honor to spend this time with you. And until next time, happy guitar playing. Thank you, LSL.